episode. Film and Everything Podcast. What's going on, guys? It's the Film and Everything Podcast. Welcome back for another episode. Um, main things I wanted to just get into right away was the announcement of the Snyder Cut. That was the main thing. I, I really wanted to talk about that uh, with you guys uh, because it's actually happening. It's a real thing. It's not... Um, and I love it because, you know, all the haters right now don't know what to say. You know, everybody that was saying, oh, it's not real. The Snyder Cut is not real. You guys are just, you know, you're in this la-la land, blah, blah, blah. All the things that everybody on Twitter was saying towards the fans. Um, and Zack Snyder did that Man of Steel stream, uh, Q&A stream yeah. with fans, I believe. And it was really awesome. We actually saw it. We were watching. We didn't see his um, stream with the movie, but we saw, like, maybe the last... 20 minutes or so and we actually got to see the announcement live which was really awesome and henry cavill was in it right and then henry cavill kind of baited him into the oh i feel like you should just show it show it you know and he's like oh well i have this little thing you know and then he you know because it's still a little bit to do but i mean there is there is this i have I have this. I don't know if this is helpful. You see that? Oh, oh my God. 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 Wow. It was really, it was, it was pretty awesome. It was honestly like really cool. And so that was, uh, you know, all over the internet. Every It broke the internet because, man, these fans, and I, I, I got to say like, all these this all these same haters that were saying that it wasn't real now they're going around saying this is not good for fandom because it's going to give toxic fans this entitlement it's going to ruin like hollywood it's going to yeah cuz it's going to ruin fandom it's going to bring this uh toxic uh it's condoning like this toxic uh entitlement in fans or something it like wasn't that it's really toxic they're just... and that's not that's so stupid this to me is a huge win because I'll tell you what, man, these fans were they, – it's it's going to make three years this year, and these fans have been going at it. I mean, going at it on, you know, contributing to do billboards on Times Square, uh, airplanes with the little flag on saying release the Snyder Cut. They, they've been doing everything that they can to get this thing out there somehow. And it got to the ears of the executives, and the executives listened. And what they're saying, the news that's going around now is that, yeah, they called Zack Snyder. And they wanted to ask him about what's going on. and and They wanted to see if it was actually real. Yeah, and our last episode, we did talk about this private screening um, that Zack Snyder did for the executives at Warner Bros. And it seems like it's true. They called him. They wanted to, I guess, discuss things and try to figure out how much they can do here. And it's going to be released on HBO Max, which, what well, we talked about last episode, it makes perfect sense. Um, I This is a huge, before we get into anything else, this is a huge win for the fans. I don't, I don't care what these haters say, that these people that are upset. Now you have the director of the Ghostbusters reboot saying, oh, well, I have a cut that's three hours. Uh, of the that reboot of Ghostbusters that just bombed. Yeah, but that's terrible. David Ayer yeah, that's is terrible. talking about his Joker with Jared Leto, how he has a cut as well, and everybody's like, "Yeah, that's not gonna happen. It's not how this works." Because those movies, at the end of the day, were their that, vision. That, and that, that was that's their your vision. Fault. That's yeah, just your fault. If you wanted to cut out Joker, that was your fault. Ghostbusters. That was just your your movie was bad anyway. <laughs> yeah. If there's a three hour cut, I don't think that's gonna help you. This is an actual cut that's so different from the original version of the, the shit show that we got of justice league when it came out two years Hello? ago it wasn't his vision at all the cinematographer cried yeah. when he saw it because he was felt so bad for Zack snyder like the mustache thing everything was... was just a mess there's literally another version of this movie out there and yeah. Zack snyder has it and it, you know it, i think this is a huge win for the fans because they really did i mean that's just a lot of support for Zack snyder you know, and Zack Snyder, it, I'm happy for him that he's gonna at least, whether it's good, whether it's yeah, bad, it, it, whatever it, could be it is, great, it could be really shitty, whatever it whatever. is. But whatever. as long as he gets his chance to show his vision of how he wanted the story to play out, because you know what, he did Man of Steel, he did Batman v Superman, 
And you know what? At least we get to see what he wanted to do with Justice League. Because people think, oh, why would I want to see a longer version of what this movie was? And it's not that. This is a whole different yeah. story. Yeah. They they completely changed the story in this. And he's been releasing pictures, concept arts. And he says it like uh, in the article, he said that one-fourth of what you see in the Justice League movie is his. One-fourth of what we saw in theaters. It's nothing. Which is nothing. And you know, I have here what they were. They're giving, and this is this is where I was shocked by that. We were actually like wrong about. I didn't think Warner Bros. was going to invest any more money into this. I yeah. thought they were just going to release it. But they're giving him twenty plus twenty million. to thirty million dollars to score the film, edit it, add, add new and fix adding visual effects. yeah, uh, fixing and adding new visual effects. And there's rumor of some sort of photography in there principal photography some sort of but i don't think that's true because no, ben affleck i don't think he wants to go they're not going to get anyone back but what what it's saying here is re-editing re-editing the film scoring new music that's to show you how different this movie is that all this needs to be completely redone music editing uh adding and uh new visual effects and finishing whatever he had left uh around 20 to 30 million dollars so they're actually investing into this. And I, it's a smart move for Warner Brothers because now that's going to be the big thing for HBO Max. People are going to want to go. This thing is supposedly, they're saying, four hours long. Could be longer. So they're they're between releasing it, the four-hour cut, or splitting I it into six episodes. I, I think that's cut. a bad move, uh, doing it in epi episodic form. It's going to ruin the flow. Because what if the first two episodes aren't that great? People are going to start hating. You know, shows just, it's very, if something's meant to be a movie, release it as a movie, you know? Yeah, I really hope it's a movie format because a show, um, it, it, it won't work. It's you don't want to make these fans that have been waiting for years already fighting for this thing to wait and watch whatever the case, maybe 30-minute episodes every week. That's I, I get why... The company would do that from a business yeah, perspective. The, it but, keeps the subscribers longer. We, we've been waiting long enough. But it's not fair, you know. Um, I it's very interesting. A movie w would just be better because you see the whole flow. That's it. Of the film. Yeah, because if you know how episodes show work, is different. Because you know the first two could be a little rough, and then people are gonna start hating on it, and, and then hating on it, and then and it's better just to watch it all at once. This thing has been going around for too long. We sat through the Irishman. I can sit through the yeah. The Irishman is three and a half hours long, you know. Uh, but again, and that's and that's just dialogue. There's not like there's not really action in it. Yeah, like, yeah. With Justice League, there's gonna be action. So you, you yeah, kind of like, like I'm, just breaks. I mean, I, I'm surprised they're giving him money for v VFX everything. Yeah, they're letting him finish. Because people thought they're doing reshoots. They're not doing reshoots. No, there's no way Ben Affleck wouldn't come back and no, no. But like there'll be more money because you have to pay Henry Cavill. Yeah. Then you that's have to pay that's ben production. Affleck. That's sets. That's no. That's not, that's definitely not gonna happen. Yeah, that's already. That's yeah. a lot of money. That's had. He was already million. pretty much done. Yeah. And so Josh oh, no, Whedon came. I think came they're in. coming in to, to record dialogue. Yeah, that's what they're. Yeah, to, to record uh, dialogue. Some actors are coming. So that's not a big deal. Which I don't know how that works, but they just over some CG stuff maybe or you know minor stuff, and you know. Whether this is good or bad or not, I'm just glad that at least we're he's going to be able to at least show his vision of what he wanted. Because that like, sucks. That sucks. He, he had, Supposedly, he said that he, he never saw the final movie. He, he didn't see the Justice League that we saw. He refused to see it. I don't blame him. Because it's so different. It's so different. And, you know, I'm glad that he at least gets a chance to show his that's vision. A, that's the thing everyone hates about. Oh, why does he get a second chance? Because he... he it's oh, not a second he, chance. They screwed him over. Oh, know, I'm really happy for him. Um, the man, I'll tell you what, the fans, they were persistent, man. When people were saying, no, it's not real, this is bullshit, yeah, and, and they the, kept on. And for the for this cut that they're, they're doing, there's, there's going to be no CGI Superman face. The mustache. Yeah. Now, the thing is... What now? You know, when it comes I have, out. I have a feeling that they're doing this, and I think something happens with Superman in that movie that's going to want to bring Henry Cavill back. Because let's say thing. this is where it gets tricky. Yeah, because Henry Cavill, he can keep yeah, being because, Superman. Because and I think he to, is. He wants to come back. Because he, he showed up back. on that live stream. He was part of the announcement. He wouldn't do that if he knew he wasn't coming back. I think they started having some meetings. He wants Zack to Zack Snyder, back. Henry Cavill. And I think he's going to come back as Superman. Because we would love to see he's him and Shazam, 
Black Adam when The Rock comes in. That's a great... And I think he wouldn't do this if he knew he wasn't coming back. He'll be like, F you guys, I'm done. So I think I think he is going to come back. Now, what happens if Justice League, this movie... If it sucks. No, no, if it sucks, you know that they're... Okay, well, we gave it to you guys. But if it's good, if fans like it, if people, it's a hit, let's say, what now? You're not going to continue that version because you already have Robert Pattinson playing Batman now that's coming out well, next they, year. They, they have, luckily, Flash... So he can mess with that type of stuff. But he's gonna have to be recasted. Yeah, which is fine. He got accused. Uh, well, no, no he he's, got, accused he's he there's saw video. there's video of him choking a woman. So that's not gonna work out well for him. Yeah. Um. Especially. But with Batman, you know, Ben Affleck's not coming back. He's already there's already a new Batman. You're not gonna have two Batmans. And Superman, we can bring back. Everybody else is fine. But I don't think they're gonna continue. This I think this is just like that. We, we have to wait and see what this is do. a big help for HBO Max. I think they're looking at it as look, look, just clearly people who want to see this. Let's just give them this. But now it's how far does this go? What if it is great? What is what is Warner Brothers gonna want to? They're now they're stuck because what if it's great and now they're like shit? What do we? We can't continue this. This is done. They no. could. Well, because Shazam does mention both of them. But there's no more Batman. Like, we have... That's it. Like, there's no chance of bringing back Ben Affleck because you just did a... There's a whole new, whole new Batman movie coming out now. They kind of... They jumped on that now. So... And you're not going to have two Batmans. There's, there's just no way. Um, so that's where I'm kind of, you know... That's what I'm interested to see on what happens here. But I'm, you know... I'm all for the Snyder Cut. I'm glad it's happening. He deserves that because, God, the movie was terrible. And... For all those people hating, and because there are people hating for whatever the reason, they're just not happy that this is happening, and they're like, "Oh, toxic fans, the entitlements." Like, dude, these are just passionate fans about for Zack Snyder. But you know what's funny? And they, it's weird how they knew. Like, this is not this is not his version. And you know, it started becoming more obvious when he stepped down. Joss Whedon came in, and when you watch the movie, it just looks incomplete. It's the cool. mustache scenario, a lot of scenes in that movie, the CG, the the green screen he, he is so make, obvious. He tried to make it more Avengers-like. And it was rushed. They're like, fuck, we got to do some. And the mo- it's a whole different movie. It's a whole hey, different movie. Like, you can and that's tell not like, fair. Like, what the color palettes. Like, like it looks weird. Like it just looks Everything, weird. you know? And, and I think the big uh, was the, the cyborg actor. He, like he, was, he was cut out completely. He, had a, he actually has a really big role in Justice League. And it's like a four-hour cut. You know what I mean? So that's why I, I uh, it's a big win. Because now, yeah, Cyborg gets that chance. Because a lot of people, I, I didn't, he had nothing to do. He was just there. You know, we get to see it more. It's going to be, it's just his and, original and, vision. And you're you're going to see the black Superman outfit. Yeah, he that's the that thing. Back. He has a whole, he has a whole other thing. He has a whole other thing. Uh, there's a whole different story here, you know? And. I am happy, you know, the fans, they did it. Uh, it's crazy how... I don't care if it sucks or if it's great. At least... This all started at from... At least we got to see it. It all started from a hashtag. It started with a hashtag. Just release the Snyder Cut. And yes, there's people back and forth. Well, if they have to give them money, then technically it's not really complete. There yeah, is wait, no wait, Snyder... Wait, the Jeremy Jans? Yeah. That perfect. That was so perfect. The way because, the, well, then if, it's, if they have to finish it, then that doesn't mean that it's technically real. And it's like, no, it's real. It just needs to be finished. It's just like this back and forth. It's like, dude, it's clearly there. The shoot... The sh- it's done filming. Obviously, they cut it midway. They cut it during post-production when Zack Snyder stepped out. And that's not cool because when he stepped out, you know, he had a family tragedy and everything. He stepped out. And they completely butchered his vision. Whether that vision would have been good or bad, we don't know. There are there was all reports saying that he learned from Batman v Superman, and they were actually applying from what the fans were saying about the criticism of Batman v, v Superman, how it was too dark, too serious, and he was trying to make it keep it dark, but also he was more like he lighter. was adding he got those criticisms and he was applying it to Justice League. And just I'm glad that we get to see that chance for him, you know, and. So Warner Bros. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Good job to the fans. Man, they really... And you know what? Just literally enjoy it. Let the hate... Because, dude, the haters are mad. They're like, oh, whoa, whoa, the toxic fan. You you can't compare these type of fans, like passionate fans, 
who don't attack anyone. They just knew this is not Zack Snyder's version. He deserves his version. They're not. They're not Last Jedi fans yelling at original and prequel fans saying, "Oh, you're just not a true Star Wars fan. You don't get it." You know, they're not attacking anyone. They're just saying, "We know that this is not his version." There's no. That's not toxic. That's just passionate fandom. But yet. When studios don't listen to fans, that's we the get, thing. We get Terminator Dark Fate. Yeah. We get Charlie's Angels. We get uh, what was the other one? Ghostbusters. There's a lot of movies where fans are like, "Why?" A perfect example, and this is not even toxic fandom. It's just fans expressing their feelings about what they see. Sonic, the the Sonic movie. Sonic actually worked. fans hated the trailer. They're like, "What is this? This isn't what Sonic is," and they were right. This is not who Sonic is. What did the studio do? And the Sorry, director the director he, said, he hey, I apologize. We're going to fix this up for you. We're going to push the movie back. They released a new trailer. And with the movie whole was actually look. better. And we loved the movie. We the saw movie, it. Yeah, it was actually good. And it got great. It made a lot of money. I think it was one of the top gaming movies to come Pe- out. Yeah, it passed uh, Pikachu. Fans loved it. If the, if the studio wanted to be like, oh, toxic fans, because we don't have to listen to you, that movie would have flopped. Nobody was going to see it. And fans actually were really happy of the fact that they listened to them and they're like you know what yeah, we're gonna I, give this movie I a think, chance wasn't now. it like sega or something mm-hmm. they, they told them, hey like what is this this is not sonic what yeah man I, that was not sonic that it was wasn't. like the kid from, it was a mutant uh, uh, it was Jumanji. a mutant yeah it was, was a wolf. mutant and what happened the fans were like you know what you listen to us you're you you understand our criticisms we're gonna go check out the movie we want to see you know we want to give it a chance and people did people liked it and it worked if they didn't listen to the fans, what would have happened? It would have flopped. You have to just stay true to what it is. You know, and that's what's going on with a lot of things. With a lot of things. When fans... Star Wars is a big one. Star Wars is in this... Warner Brothers is in a good step right now with DC. Because they're, they're, they're listening they're, to they're, fans. They're, yeah, they're trying to fix Wonder it up Woman is again. working. Their movies are working now. Joker, they let the creatives just have creative freedom. And it brought them a billion dollar profit. They're listening to fans more. This is something... That works. It's good, you know. And I'm really happy for the Snyder cut for Zack Snyder and all the fans. They did great, and it applies to a- anything. The the fandom right now, these people are all oh, well. And it, it's like, why is this all starting now with toxic fandom? I don't understand. Like, oh, sorry that we care about something so much that we don't like. And the what studios you're doing. right now are they're just like, what are you doing? There's a lot of times where it's just look at Star Wars. Star Wars right now is thing. in such a limbo. We were watching those people rant about, about Star Wars. You never those yeah. Dude, that guy was crying. There's you know fans how, crying about how, how bad ruining. these movies were. You know? all And... Yes, there's toxic fans. There's you fans know, sending there, death there's, threats. There's, like, yeah, there's those always those extremes, extremes. And that's been around since the prequels. We understand that. But man, right now... It's it's so dumb and ignorant to just be like, well, you don't like the movie because you're this, that, and that, and you're just toxic fans. To say for the fans to react, hey, this isn't what Star Wars is, you know? Look you at know? Last Jedi. How many fans were like, this is not right? And what did Ryan Johnson do? He was just like, no, you guys just don't understand it. This is just too above you, you know? You that? That's basically what oh. he was implying because he would just send pictures of him with Star Wars books. Like, yeah, like, I understand Star Wars. Like, he was implying that he understands it more than anyone else. And that's why everybody made such a big deal when Dave Filoni came out. And he literally explained all of Star Wars, with fa- starting from Phantom Menace to Episode Six. That was his rant. And he blew everyone away. You kind of And he, there was no sense of condescending tone or ego. It was just him being a Star Wars fan. Because Ryan Johnson, all he has is ego. He oh, yeah. thinks he knows more than everyone else. And Dave Filoni is just like, hey... I'm a fan just like you guys. This is what George Lucas has taught me. There's a difference there. And that's why Ryan Johnson's out and Dave Filoni's going to, I think, be on top. And I, I, know, I, I, I feel like it's going to happen because Kathleen Kennedy clearly doesn't know what she's doing. Well, it's clear. Well, Look at the sequel movies. Well, you saw well, um, George Lucas, that, the, the tech that they're using for The Mandalorian... He's been was, wanting to he's do He's been that. wanting to use it for his own TV shows when he was in charge. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of them. Like, like they're kind of doing what George Lucas always wanted, kind of. Yeah. Like, they're, 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 they're like uh, John Favreau and David. Yeah, you know, and <clears throat> nothing wrong with that, man. I understand it's not cool to be uh, attack actors, 
Ne- no, but it's not the actor's fault. I mean, yeah, never attack actors. You can hate the character, whatever character yeah, you want. Yeah, but you can it, hate. I mean, like they're just reading. But to send death threats, attack actors. That's they're just dude. They're getting a paycheck. They're in a Star Wars movie it, it, again. If it's like what Mark Hamill said, if I'm great in the movie, it's because of Ryan. If I'm terrible in the movie, it's because of Ryan. Exactly. So and it's kind of like Ryan Johnson wanted that for Rose. He wanted her to do and say all those things. Yeah, and and he. But just That's the characters you're... in general, you know, and, and, and Star Wars is such with, a limbo. With Finn. They're saying like, look, yeah. at, look at what they did to Finn. Like, it was someone tweeted like, Finn got so like, John Pawlyka got screwed over so bad. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, Force Awakens, he was gonna be a Jedi because the way because he was actually doing pretty well the lightsaber in Force Awakens. Yeah. And like he was actually like like he was at the blocks a few shots. Like, he looked pretty cool with it. And, th- and that been a cool story, a stormtrooper turning into a Jedi. And this is where I, you know, get frustrated. It's just it's just all a mess. But these sequel movies were obviously whoever was in charge, which was Kathleen Kennedy. There was no oversight. I don't know what she was thinking. For the, there was clearly no, no vision. There was no overall vision for these three movies. That's clear. And I think it all got shitted on when Ryan Johnson did Last Jedi and Kathleen Kennedy didn't listen to Mark Hamill, didn't listen to the – didn't Actors. look – didn't analyze what he was doing and didn't respect J.J. with Force Awakens. Because you know what? At the end of the day, the Force Awakens overall left fans excited for what's to come. J.J. – and this is confirmed from Daisy Ridley, Simon Pegg, all the – the cast members who actually wanted to speak out. J.J. Abrams and and everybody wants to say, oh, J.J. just didn't know what he was doing. He started all this. He had an outline. Look it up. There's reports from Daisy Ridley, uh, Simon Pegg, um, Finn, uh, John Boyega. There's sometimes that he mentions about Last Jedi. He's like, yeah, I thought we he says it. I thought I was going one way in this story and then Last Jedi it just brought, took me a whole different way. And J.J., had an outline for the three films. He had an outline. Colin Trevorrow has been working on episode nine since 2015, which was Force Awakens. So he clearly understood, okay, I have an idea of what's going on. What happened? Force Awakens was written by J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasten, who was the original writer for, I believe, Empire, or one of the original yeah. Star Wars movies. Or as a return. One of those. It might have been Empire. So he had someone there. Why was Last Jedi solely written by Ryan Johnson? Kathleen Kennedy, knowing if she she must have known this, knowing J.J. Abrams had an outline because he could call it Trevor. Because was solo. They and, fired them when the movie's about to be done. Like 90% of the movie was about to be finished, and then that's when she wants to fire them. And th- Which doesn't make sense because, okay, so you're not watching the footage? You're not saying, okay, wait a minute. Why is this movie acting like this weird way? And this is why it's her You fired fault. The, the two, uh, what are their names? Um, Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Yeah, you fire them when the movie's 90% complete. Yep. That's when you want to fire them? And then you bring Ron Howard. The guy had to reshoot, like, was it like half the movie? And he actually did well. He did what well, he but, but that should show you. How do you not notice these things? And that, that's the thing. 90% of the movie. Jesus Christ. You have Ryan Johnson... Writing it by himself, J.J. Abrams showed him because there's reports. There's it's online, telling him what he wanted to do with the story, and Ryan Johnson in any single way that he could, whether it was through uh, subtext in the film, throwing the lightsaber away. There were so many little subliminal things in that movie that show, hey, I'm throwing this. In the trash, I'm doing. I'm breaking this. He, it's just so deliberate. It's so obvious. And from what he was saying in all the articles, well, just, just, and, just watch the making. And it's just, it it's there. And so you're, t- you're telling me you're Kathleen Kennedy. You are overseeing all this, and you're reading that script. You see that Mark Hamill's not happy with it, and you're thinking, oh yeah, I like this. Ryan Johnson's great. Go ahead. Here's the green light. Go do this movie. Here's a, and then budget of who knows how much knowing that it's completely breaking what jj hadn't planned and then colin trevor had to adapt and he had to write a version 
which I thought he did really well of following Last Jedi, but also honoring Star Wars of what it is, that he gets fired. Then they bring back J.J., and at this point, J.J. is just... I'm, I, there's no doubt in my mind. They told him, dude, like, let, we, let's just figure this out. What do we got to do? And J.J., you can see it in his face. We saw the documentary on Rise of Skywalker. We've seen interviews. He, his face says it all. He just looks like, I'm here to just do damage control. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to do my best. You compare his excitement from Rise of Skywalker to Force Awakens, it's two different things. And that's all on Kathleen Kennedy. It's so disappointing. And then you can't be mad at fans for seeing this, siding with Mark Hamill, because even Mark Hamill was extremely vocal about this. That's not toxic fans. That's just pa- fans that actually know what Star Wars is. I mean, even the, the Darth Maul actor... Uh, all, the all these actor. actors have come out. Have remember, come out. Remember, like when John Boyega came out, and then like, it was like Daisy Ridley, like like saying, "Oh yeah," when the first day was set, everyone was kind of like confused, what was happening like, on yeah. set because it was just like because they're all reading the script and we're all kind of like. And I love what Sam Witwer said on his stream about Last Jedi. He's like, "Hey, I like Ryan Johnson, but." This look that movie felt to me like if it was done by someone who doesn't understand Star Wars, I didn't do their homework. And he said, "You can't break the rules of something." No, no, you can't. Wh- you can't reinvent. Is that what he said? You can't reinvent or break the rules about something without actually knowing the rules first. And that's what Ryan Johnson tried to do. And you know, it is what it is. Whatever. But you can't just attack fans for knowing what's wrong here. And Kathleen Kennedy. It's on her, man. It's on her because she could have been like, hey, Ryan. But she just fell in so much in love with what Ryan Johnson was doing with that movie because clearly they have the same mindset with Star and Wars. And look at what that, that – we're watching that making of Last Jedi and his little uh, butt buddy that he had. Um, his producer. Yeah, that, that producer guy. Dude, that guy, he, what he said to Mark Hamill pissed me the fuck off. Oh, you're not Luke. You're, you're uh, Obi-Wan. Dude, he called him Obi Wan. Yeah, and the way he said it too, it and wasn't way, just like, like he was like, "Oh, because you know Mark Hamill thought Luke was gonna come and be this big," and he's like, "But he needs to understand that oh, he's Obi-Wan. not Luke in this story. He's Obi Wan." And it's dude, like, the way he and said even it, then, Obi Wan was treated better. Dude, but the way he said it, I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "That that was your mindset into that movie." I, I and clearly, Kathleen Kennedy was fine with that. She liked the idea. Of that, and that's just not cool, man. And you know, this whole thing now with toxic fandom, Henry Cavill has come out defending the fans, and you know, yeah, people who understand. Uh, you saw the thing I sent you with that blue check mark dude, yeah. And because he was like, uh, oh, because I get like if I get casted in a movie, I was like some actor, I don't even know who he was. If I get cast in the movie, then the fans will just be toxic enough, and then I get recasted with someone better. It's like it's not. That's not the way. How it works. this works? Yeah, it's so stupid. And it's not the way it is. It is what it is, man. You know. And Star Wars right now, I do think Dave Filoni's gonna. He's gonna take over. Clone Wars was a huge hit. People loved it. Mandalorian's a hit, and clearly from what's coming out. And who's coming in Mandalorian season two? It's going to be it's going to be huge. And <clears throat> Kathleen Kennedy, there's no more Star Wars movies coming for a while. Thank God. So, and I I think very quietly Lucasfilm, Disney, they know what's going on, and I think they're gonna. They, she needs to go. Whatever, at least forget. Don't listening. always don't always listen to fans. Yeah, you but, can't just cater to fans. I I understand that. Yeah, but, but like you gotta certain be things. willing to be self aware and understand what's going on. And I think that's what Lucasfilm needs. Warner Brothers learned the hard way. They're like, man, hold on. Let's take a step back here. And they're doing well. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Shazam. They're, they, they're learning from their mistakes. They're listening to criticisms. With Justice League, they're like, you know what? We did just kind of like butcher that vision. The fans really want this. Let's just give it to them. We'll make some money on HBO Max. It'll be fine. Hopefully it's a movie. You know? So. Because we saw the Batman vs. Superman uh, cut the the extended yeah. the extended cut. I mean, it's still bad. The movie's still bad, but 
it it's, does it, does it give makes you it more, better uh a yeah little we, better. we saw the batman v superman ultimate edition so it was like three hours long and it was a real three hours long like it was two hours and 55 minutes and then credits yeah and it does make the movie a lot more coherent with the story. Yeah. Like, you do understand the story. Like, it builds it up a little better. It does have issues, you know, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, he, he, he um, I don't get the. You, you don't really buy into why Batman and the whole Martha, that thing was kind of like, ah. Martha, yeah. I know her name. Uh, and the movie, I think, was missing something. I think it did need a little bit more. Doomsday, I don't know why he was in it. The, it was too much. It was too much in one movie. And I felt it. It was, it was three hours long, and I still felt like, man, like, this is like. There's sometimes in the movie I was kind of like, where is this going to go? Like, I understand the story, but it was just too much in one movie, you know? And Because you're doing a backstory on Batman, then he bringing Wonder Woman, then you got to do, like, Superman. Lex Luthor setting up Doomsday. and Which I don't want to kill Doomsday. Like They just wanted to go all out quick. And I don't know if that's the studio or Zack Snyder or both. And, you know, but it, the Ultimate Edition does make the movie better. What would you give it in rating? Uh, like a 7 maybe yeah like a seven or maybe like a six i don't know it's between there just because there's not a lot of like the action just kind of just there you know yeah. except the warehouse scene with uh that, that was a really cool because batman even fight. the uh batman v superman fight i was like but why isn't he just telling him like i didn't believe it i didn't believe that they, they had to fight you know the stakes weren't there because i was like but he can just tell him what's going on but why did he give up so early as opposed to like Civil War, where you start feeling that tension to where it gets to that point where they're just, you know. So, a lot of little things like that. But the story is fleshed out a lot better in the extra additional 30 minutes that they cut out. Oh, the Tenet trailer came out. Uh, a yeah. new Tenet trailer came out yesterday. And um, it's Christopher Nolan's big way of just like making his stance on movie theaters. Like, hey, movie theaters are still a thing. We're going to keep. We're standing with our July release, and I respect that because at the end of the trailer it says "coming to theater." So it's like that stance of like we're not pushing this to video on demand because he's really passionate about movie theaters, the movie yeah. theater experience, and stuff like that. I like the trailer. Uh, you can definitely see how the studio was trying to hype up the trailer, making it theaters get people excited about going to the theaters again, whether it's gonna actually come out in theaters or not. I don't know. That's the tough part. But well, not now, but. It's, it's in July. It's scheduled have, for July. I have a feeling they're going to push it back to, like, November. If Yeah, if things don't get better. Um, but they're, they're keeping their stance because now it's putting that pressure. On th- it's keeping things con- – they're staying confident. Yeah. Because if they it's announce – It's just – it's going to be hard for theaters, man. Because what's going on is a lot of the studios are getting comfortable with the fact of, oh, just delay, release on video on demand. And th- they're starting to see, I think, Christopher Nolan's starting to see the problem. And he's starting to see, like, they're going to just give up on movie theaters, you know? So he's Look making right his stance. what happened with Invisible Man and, uh, uh, yeah. was it Trolls or whatever? A lot of movies, yeah. yeah so. Never the AMC said they're not showing no more. So he wants to make that stance in, in that stance for movie theaters. I really respect that, you know? Because a lot of theaters kind of quit on theaters very easily. Like, yeah. A, a lot of these big companies. In July, happen. there's still some time from here to July where, let's see where things go. You know, yeah. things are opening and, and, um. Uh, the trailer was great. Uh, it's still very vague. There's more footage, but you still don't know what the story's about, um, which is gr- always good because I never want to know a story about anything uh, when I'm going in. I just want to just, especially with a movie like this, with Christopher Nolan, that I just I know I'm gonna watch it regardless, you know. And um, the main actor, uh, John David Washington, uh, said that what he's doing with this movie could change filmmaking and like set up filmmaking for the next 10 to 15 years that's what he said which is like like what does this guy have planned you know robert pattison said that it's mind-blowing what he does he does say this is not time travel like it's oh he's doing a whole other thing it's here. like what is it uh reverse inversion inversion so i don't it's know like, what that but they can so like manipulate things to like yeah, reverse like when he shoots the bullet it, it goes backward it's it, really it goes weird back, stuff like yeah. it loads back into the gun and you can tell it's very practical in yeah the trailer like you can see the like doesn't very, feel heavy on cg doesn't like, which like, i love yeah you see how they're driving they're driving backwards it's yeah. everything is like backwards so it's it's, it's gonna be crazy i'm really excited because 
Yeah, he said it, this could depict filmmaking for the next 10 to 15 years. Robert Pattinson, I'm not going to be working out for yeah, the Batman. Man. And, yeah, we get more about Robert Pattinson in this. It looks great. Which, uh, which when I heard him speak, I was like, oh, because that's his character. You think his character is going to be serious or something. Yeah. But but you, I, there's, a, there's a lot of humor in the trailer. Yeah. So that kind of threw us off a little bit. I was like, yeah, oh. Yeah, because I, I don't know why. Because when I saw, okay, Robert Pattinson, I thought he was going to be this whole other different character. And when I see him speak, he's like, oh, he's, he's like, like the like, charming, yeah. talkative guy. Yeah. And he does well. He's doing he's doing good. Yeah. Um I like the trailer though. Again, didn't show too much. Yes, there's new footage and stuff, but I still don't know what the movie's about. You I'm, know I'm what not I mean? gonna watch anymore though. I'm just gonna yeah, watch. that's it. I'm done with trailers, I'm done with all that. I'm hoping it comes out in July. I'm <laughs> glad that Christopher Nolan and the Warner Brothers did that because they're it's just to make that stance of hey, like don't give up on movie theaters just yet, yeah. you know? And I'm really happy about yeah, that. Quiet Place, we're supposed to see Quiet Place already. Yeah, but yeah, they were just coming out in a terrible time. They would have bombed. James Bond. They would have bombed. You know, I'm curious. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for Tenet, man. That's a big movie. It's gonna be a big movie. It's as big as they're saying. It's his most ambitious movie yet, and yeah. he's done some pretty fucking crazy movies. Like so Inception. Far. Yeah. So. For some reason they put it on Fortnite. I don't know why. Whatever sells. Everything's on Fortnite. People are like, why? Like, how a bunch of eight year olds supposed to do it? Tenet but is- it, you'll, you'll have those eight-year-olds going to see the movie, you know? That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, but just, Fortnite is really desperate. Yeah. They're really trying to... Yeah, I know. But let's see, man. Stay relevant. Let's see. You know, uh, Ten is looking great. I'm really excited for that. I'm hoping things are better by then because I, I want to see that in IMAX. But it, it's it's tough. It's, it's a tough, tough spot, tough. you know? But the trailer was great. Tra- um, that's our episode for today. We really want to talk about this stuff. Um, Um... And yeah, guys, you know, thank you for watching. If you're watching us, if you're listening to us, thank you. As always, leave us a little review. If you want to comment on our comment section about what we just talked about today, if you guys disagree with us or agree with us, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. We're going to keep doing this. We want to keep going. And thank you guys so much for listening, for watching, and till the next one. Film and Everything Podcast. Till next time.